This is just a quick video on installing um, the C++ development environment for your desktop machine. Um, in this case I'm going to use a Windows machine because it's the most common installation and uh, there's a few challenges with it. If you're on Linux um, you can install Eclipse the same as uh, what I'm doing except for you don't have to kind of go through the uh, C++ installation steps. If you're on Mac you can use Xcode instead of uh, MinGW um, but pretty much all the rest of the steps are the same. Uh, so the first thing just to clarify for, for people who are not familiar is that a, a development environment like Eclipse CDT is like an editor. It, it, it it ties your projects together, it brings your individual files together, it formats your code so that it looks nice, but effectively it's just a very fancy version of Notepad if you like. It just allows you to tidy up your code and group it together. And, and that's a little bit of a simplification, but just to get a point across. It doesn't actually have a compiler built into it whatsoever. Um, the whole point of it is that you could have multiple compilers installed on your machine. You could be cross-compiling from x86 to ARM devices, for example. You could have a, a different versions of a compiler for different releases and so on. So so there's, there's a distinction between the development environment, which is your editor, and your compiler. So the first thing you need to install is a compiler and for for Windows um, to use an open source compiler um, you can use MinGW. It's a minimum GW installation, GNU installation for Windows. So to, to use this MinGW works well. Um, you go to MinGW.org and you go to Downloads and there's a setup uh, system uh, for individual components or you can use the uh, the the overall installer. So I'm going to just install this this one. It should start downloading. Yeah. Okay. And this is your installer. And the, the installer they allow it to run. Um, it 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 allows you to choose different um, uh, um, packages that you want to install. Uh, from GNU. For, from GNU. Um, so choose the installation directory. Try and stick with the standard installation directory of C colon slash MinGW. Uh, try not to introduce something with a space in it that typically causes problems in, in some packages. Uh, uh, so it just takes a minute for it to, to download the list of um, packages. Okay. So when that's done, press continue, and you get this uh, installation manager, and this allows you to choose the type of packages that you want to install. So for example, we can use MinGW32, and we can install a G++, uh, mark that for installation, um, If and similarly for... Um, other packages you might want. Uh, we, there's an Objective C, Fortran, Ada compiler, and a basic. Min, I, I put in uh, MinGW base as well. Uh, so that includes GCC, uh, Linker and Binary Tools, API support. Um, this one, uh, Meta Tools, uh, Auto Tools. Oh, we're okay with that. Okay, so we'll just stick stick with those two for the moment. Um, so once you do that, um, apply changes and then you'll see that once you apply it connects and downloads all of these changes some in previous years I've had issues with firewalls with this particular piece of software so uh, just if you are having difficulty with installations um, check your firewall I've also seen very aggressive corporate firewalls so for example if you have a laptop from work uh, where things like DLLs are not installed, so just be careful that um, you know that that everything is is working correctly, and maybe speak to your technical uh, support if you're having issues where things aren't installing correctly. If you, if you've got a corporate laptop, in all other cases, it should be it should be okay. Okay, so once that's finished, close the dialog and it should be installed. And if I go out to this C drive, uh, C colon slash 
you should see in MinGW there's an installation directory and in there there's a bin and that's where the compiler is installed so for example if we go out to command uh, command I just typed CMD uh, you can go to C colon slash uh, uh, MinGW uh, and you can type G++ um, G++, that's that's good news if you get if you get no input files okay so that tells me that I've got having just installed it today I now have G G++ version 9.20 installed on my machine so that means my compiler is good to go if I go to another directory and I type it's not recognized so so one thing we might have to do is if you want to be able to call this from any point on your computer we need to add the c colon slash min gw slash bin directory to our path so to do that you go down to start and you can just type environment variables and that allows you to edit the system environment variables for your account and this system property, you can get into this through the control panel or whatever way. I just find the search is the easiest way to find things. Go into your system properties and down at the bottom there's environment variables and we can edit the path for our um, for our programs. So the path is effectively is where the device, so this is for user variables or system variables. Um, I might, I might, let me just see. I'm going to add it to this system to the to, to the environment variables for the system variables so for the entire system so we're going to add in c colon slash min gw slash bin um, okay 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 now I think you have to start yeah uh, let's you have to exit your command prompt and I can start command prompt again by start cmd and command prompt appears or just hit enter and if I go into, if I just stay where I am, you'll see now, wherever I go, if I'm in the C colon directory or anywhere, uh, if I type G++, you'll see that it, it finds it. So G++ minus version is what I used before to get the current version. So that means that my compiler is now accessible from anywhere on my machine. So that's, that's useful to have, particularly if you want to go out to the command prompt and compile code uh, quickly and just execute it quickly. It, it works well. So the next step then is to install Eclipse itself. Um, so go to eclipse.org slash cdt. Um, cdt stands for C slash C++ development tooling. Um, and you just download it. Uh, if I can find the link, download. Okay. I've had to uh, delete this off my machine to in order to do the, the, this video. Um, so, oh, I'm in the I'm in the download page. Um, so I'll go for. Let me just read this quickly. Um, CDT ten. I don't ever like install anything that says point zero point zero. Oh look, I'll give it a go. Okay. So Windows 64-bit in my case, or clearly Mac OS X or Linux 64-bit. Uh, I'm I'm Windows 64-bit here. Um, download. Oh, you can donate if you want. Okay, so it downloads here in the bottom corner. Thankfully, my connection to home is fiber. Um, so Eclipse is a little bit unusual in that um, you can you you can just extract it to a location. So I'm going to place it. I, I'll I'll place it in the maybe I shouldn't, but I will. I'm going to place it in the root directory of C. So it's C colon slash Eclipse. Okay. Once that's finished, you can go into the Eclipse directory, and you'll see it. I, uh, Again, I'm not that happy where it is. C colon slash Eclipse. You could put it into program files if you so wished, but look, it's fine where it is. I'm just going to um, create a desktop shortcut here. Um, so I'll just right click and drag, create shortcut here, just so I have it on the desktop. Uh, and I'm going to double click that just to start it up. Um, 
Oh. Run. Again, a bit nervous about 202009 as my version, but look, let's see if it works. I, I choose a workspace directory. This is the default workspace directory, it's fine. Oh, I, I probably have things in there already, so I might create one 2020. Again, I deleted my Eclipse so I could install it. Uh, use this as default and do not ask again. I might just leave that. Uh, and it launches. Bit slow. Okay, so there's a guide there to work through. It's looking good so far. Uh, um, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, there's a guide there to work through. Uh, you can just close it when you're finished. And I'm just going to create a new project just to check that it's working properly. So new C++ project. I'm going to call it a uh, C++ project. Next. And I'm just going to... I always do this. I always check um, hello world C++ project at the start because I find it sets the environment environment variables up better. Um, so hello world C++ project and choose your, your tool chain as MinGW which you already installed or equivalently on Mac or Linux choose your tool chain as uh, um, GCC. Cross GCC is used for cross compiling. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's on my machine. I'm just going to call this project uh, week one. No spaces. I try and avoid spaces if you can. Uh, we'll forget the author and we'll finish at that. Okay. Okay. So just I'm not sure why how I did this, um, but I it contracted the whole thing down. Um, okay. I've got a breakpoint there. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'll leave that. Um, so here's my week one project. Um, so I've got my source file. Uh, you can see any includes that are listed there. Here's my program. I have a split screen view here, which is could be useful if you want to work on two different points in the code at the same time. So I might leave that there. I haven't used that before really in Eclipse. Um, so this allows me in my hello world. So we'll just change this just to make sure it's working. Hello, um, EE402 students. And then just, uh, we don't need a comment to say that. Um, Control S to save. And then we can just project build, build all. Just the first time you tend to use build rather than the play button or the build button. Um, just make this a bit bigger. I usually use my screen bigger, but just for the video, I've reduced the size down. So build finish, zero errors, zero warnings. Better try and run. Um, local C++ application. Okay, so there it ran and there's the output in my console at the bottom. Hello EE402 students. Okay, so at this point you have everything you need to write projects to add a class for example which you'll use later. You can just go in and just say a uh, new class um, and and so on. So we'll, we'll talk about that in, in week two and beyond. But at the moment that's enough for you to get started with.